Good morning, traders and investors. My name is Roger Scott, and I'm the senior strategist for WealthPress. Today is Monday. It's the 9th of May. Don't ask me where the year has gone. I've got no answers for you. I hope everybody had a really nice Mother's Day weekend and got some rest and got some time to spend with your family and friends. So looking at the market, uh, we are down quite a bit. I believe this is a shakeout. It sure spells like a shakeout, and I'll explain to you why. There are several reasons why I believe that's the case. So, but we are down quite a bit. And uh, last week, it was kind of, it, the market was holding up pretty well till the end of the week. Uh, the economic data came came out and the earnings came out and the markets just sank. But let's talk about this week. First of all, in terms of what we have on the table, we've got the CPI report and we've got the consumer sentiment. The consumer sentiment is going to be important because it's not being front run by uh, the GDP or the FOMC. It's not being front run by major reports. So we'll have a good chance to see what consumer sentiment is like because consumer sentiment reflects about two thirds of the economy. Two thirds of the economy is retail sales and that's consumer sentiment. Aside from that, I want to show you guys something. This is the long bond. And one of the reasons why the market has been dropping so much because, has been because the low bond has been, long bond has been going lower. Lo lower long bond means higher interest rates. Now take a look at this. This is divergence between price and the bond. The RSI is basically overdone, oversold to the downside, but it also seems like it can't go any lower. So, um, and again, usually this means there's going to be at least a bounce doesn't mean there's going to be a turnaround but at least a bounce so it would be really really nice right now to get a bounce taking us to the 125 or 130 level and it would also at the same time relieve some pressure off the stock market because lower rates means um more upside in technology and consumer discretionary stocks now let's uh let me show you the put to call ratio this is the put to call ratio and as you could see here ever since uh november it's been it hasn't touched this downside it's been only above this pink line you know what i'll do i'll change the color of this line so to make it a little less confusing let's um make it green there we go that's it green and, pur and purple so whenever we see price go above the green line that means that markets are getting a little bit overdone to the downside because there's way, way too many put buyers. And as you could see, we've been having way, way, way too many put buyers. The market has not been neutral. It's been very, very put heavy. And it has been very, very little heavy call buyer activity. Typically, when you see this type of a period, it tends to revert itself and it goes back to the mean. So that's a very, very bullish sign, the fact that we're still above one. Another bullish sign is this is the number of stocks in the NASDAQ trading above the 50 day moving average. Look at where we're at. We're near, we're literally, we're at 13. COVID was 10. So we're very, very close to the bottom. And I want you guys to see this because typically when markets go down here, look at where they go up afterwards. Look at where they go up afterwards. They don't sit near these levels for a long time. They bounce and they bounce hard, really hard. That's the number of stocks trading above the 50 day moving average. Now look at the 200 day moving average on a monthly. This is the big daddy. This is 2018, this is 2020, this is 2008. Look at where we're at now, we're below this line. Now what's interesting is this, as, as I show you this, what's interesting, and I think this is just so amazing, is the fact that when I'm looking at the Dow, you still have 49% of stocks trading above the, the um, 200 day moving average. Anything over 50 would put us at a, bear, uh, at a bull market. So the fact that we have 49% or 49% 49, 49 of stocks in the Dow trading above the 200 day moving average is not all that bearish. Here's something interesting that I wanna show you guys that not a lot of people are talking about. So these are the 10 major sectors. Consumer staples looks like it's about to start heading higher from here on. Energy looks like it can go a little bit higher, or at least congest. Utilities looks really strong here, just like consumer staples. Basic materials looks like it's, it, it can go either way, but I'm, I'm really bullish on basic materials right now. Um, healthcare looks like it's, it's, it's almost done going down. It looks like it's gonna enter in a congestion. Industrial stocks look like they've bottomed out, just like basic materials does. Financials looks like they've bottomed out, and the second high is low is higher. Real estate looks like it bottomed out. Now here's where it gets interesting. So these have been the weakest sectors, right? Technology, consumer discretionary, communication. 
communication services has been the most lagging sector. Let me let me show you what I'm talking about. If you look at my filters, you will see right here. You will see right here. Whoops, excuse me. Look at the six month communication services, right? Look, technology, consumer discretionary communication services. Communication services is the weakest one. On a one month basis, communication services is still the weakest one. Granted, not by a lot, by like 0.12% of a point, but nonetheless, when you look at the chart though, check this out. So communications has been the weakest sector. I just showed you how it's been the weakest sector cumulatively over six months, over the last three months, and over the last month. But look at this, there's a new low here, right? In tech, in tech right here. There's a new low in consumer discretionary, but there's no new lows in communication services. That high is higher than that. That's the first time that's happened in several months. So the fact that you've got 49% of stocks in the Dow trading above the 50 day moving average, uh, 200 day moving average. The fact that the put to call ratio is still above one. The fact that the bond market has bottoming out, but momentum levels are diverging. The fact that you've got um, stocks in the NASDAQ 200 day line that are near, I mean, this is 2008 here, folks. That says we're near the bottom. So, and, and again, you have divergence between communication, communication services, and let me show you. That's huge. I mean, I think that is huge because, and I'll show you why in a second. Look at this. Lower, lower, right? Look. Way lower, right? And really overdone, but lower nonetheless. But look at this. Higher. And let's look at the QQQ to see if the QQQ itself made a lower, lower low. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it did. Look at that. I think this is this morning right here. And I think that's the bottom. So, or near the bottom. So the point is all the all the weak hands, the weakest, weakest assets made a lower low, but the weakest one, the one that's been lagging behind, this one here did not. I think that's very, very interesting. And again, I'm gonna show you on a cumulative basis. Let's let's look on a six month basis. Communication services, right? I just organized it by a six month. Three month, whoops, I got stuck. The point is, the point is on every time frame, on every time frame, let me just close this. Communication services is lagging, but it did not make a new low. And I think that's really, really interesting. And something that's very, very something you guys should keep in mind that's showing strong divergence. Now let's talk about global economy. Slowing Chinese economy weighted on investor sentiment, especially last week. China reported its export rose 3.7%. That's down from 15.7% as global demand weakens. China is big, remember, they're a huge, huge, the biggest exporter. Companies and investors worry the ruling Communist Party, zero COVID strategy, the temporary closed most businesses and other industries is disrupting global trade. Investors are watching for the outcome of the presidential election in Philippines, although it remains unclear how the economic policies might change. Turbulent week on Wall Street, to say the least, ended Friday with more losses and stock market fifth straight weekly decline fifth ouch the pullback comes as investors balance a strong u.s job report against worries that the federal reserve may cause a recession apart from concerns about inflation and the COVID, the war in ukraine is still a major cause of uncertainty markets don't like uncertainty more than 60 people were feared dead after a russian bomb flattened a school that was being used as a shelter the fed is hoping to raise rates and slow the economy enough to snuff out the highest inflation in four decades but risks choking off growth it's a balancing act, folks. And again, biggest report is going to be CPI this week. What we need to do, what we need to do right now, and I'm, I'm serious, is we need to watch, we need to watch this sector right here. And let's see if this sector makes a new low or not. If this sector does not make a new low, if this sector does not make a new low, let's see here. If it doesn't, at the open, let's see where the open is. If it doesn't make, if it keeps diverging, it's gonna be a very, very strong sign that we're starting to have a sector turnaround because this has been lagging behind everything by a really st uh, strong percentage for a while now. And again, look at this, 
down 27 percent uh, let, let me just organize this look at this energy of 42 percent communications down 27 percent it's starting to strengthen up that's very 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 important and remember consumer price index is going to be the most important report because we'll see how the inflationary pressure is impacting the consumer the consumer is what drives the economy and again year over year 8.1 percent increase and month over month 0.2 percent increase this report is coming out wednesday before the opening bell keep your eye this week on the communication sector it's going to be really 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 big now before i let you go i've got something important for you we've all been there before traders buy the dip in their favorite stock but then the dip turns into a correction and then that correction well it can turn into a crash all of a sudden two to three months of gains are wiped out in two to three days this is what we call blowing up an account. And we see new traders making this mistake all the time. The key here is using a built-in hedge, a built-in hedge. The hedge allows us to take full advantage of the moves higher. And when the market crash finally comes, we're fully protected. When we had the COVID crash, we made 466% on our hedge. It was energy and it was going down. We made 466%, I think, on our on, just on the hedge option. It was crazy. This hedge allows us to take full advantage of the moves higher. And when the market crashes, oh boy, we're protected. Follow the link below to watch how my rota rotational strategy could help during these volatile periods. Tomorrow, strongest sector, strongest stock, weakest sector, weakest sector, weakest stock. Do not miss out. Follow the link below. If you can't find the link below, go to the YouTube Wealth Press channel. It's in the descriptor. Give us some comments, some feedback. I want to hear from you. Send me some love letters. Support at marketgeeks.com. Bye, everyone.